Well, welcome along to the second episode in the Circuit Breaker series here on Crunchy Racing TV. And I'm very pleased to say that I've been joined by uh, one of the most likable jockeys at Crunchy for sure. Uh, his name is Harry Cassam, and he very kindly takes time out to, to join me on the line. Harry, first off, uh, how are you? How are you? How are you coping with a circuit breaker? Yeah, good, Nick. Um, yeah, it's, things been okay. Thanks, thanks for having me. <clears throat> yeah, um, hasn't been doing much, uh, to be honest, Nick, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, it's good to be back now. I'm back on the track, uh, doing a little bit of track work. So, yeah, pretty excited about that. And you were telling me, Harry, that because your, your PR, I think a bit like one or two of the other jockeys, um, you're able to, to get back in and, and start riding a, a little bit of track work. Um, how much has that sort of um, affected your, your sort of lifestyle at the moment? I guess for a jockey to go two months today without racing is, is absolutely crazy. But at least getting back to track work must be, for you, the, the start. And you can see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nick, you know, like we, you, you can say, you know, every jockey, you know, all, all they want to do, you know, be on the horse every single day, pretty much, you know, mm. and uh, especially on the race day. But uh, yeah, for, for us to be, to be off for, you know, close to two months, that's a long, long time. And um, it drives me a little bit crazy too, you know, not being able to, you know, pet the horse, you know, like riding yeah. a horse, you know, yeah. it's more like an exercise for you. At the same time, too, you know, sure. and um, been been for two months, so yeah, it's pretty long, long time. But like to me, as a PR, you know, pretty pretty lucky that I'll be able to get back to work now. So yeah, it's pretty good. And what else have you been doing, Harry? Obviously, we we you know we're, you're quite active on social media. We see you sort of um, you know scooting around on the motorbikes and and playing around with them and different things. Have have you been able to keep busy? I know a few of the the jockeys have sort of, you know, been out on bikes and riding and running and different things. I mean, you're obviously naturally light. Have you, have you had to really focus on your, your fitness and your weight or has that been quite easy for you? Look, I'm, I'm pretty natural, natural lightweight jockey. So I'm, I'm not worried too much about, about my weight. You know, I've been eating a lot, <laughs> but um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't put much weight at all. I mean, yeah, a couple of kilos, that's, that's about it. Uh, yeah, it's been doing nothing much really you know just helping my wife she she was doing a little bit little bit of backing you know and sending some stuff on online or thing like that sure and apart from that you can see that um usually uh, I'll, I'll be able to sort of go around in my motorbike and stuff and go go back to my uh, my malaysia house in jb but um yeah i wouldn't be able to do that at the moment so i'm pretty pretty much stuck in singapore but um yeah, sort of kill my time. I really just sort of hanging around watching TV with my brother, <laughs> brother-in-law and, and my father-in-law. Yeah, that's about it, really. I, I'll tell you what you have been busy doing, and that's growing your hair and growing a beard. That's an impressive beard you've got, Harry, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks, Luke. Yeah. Well, my, my wife's not pretty happy about this, you know. Like she's keep telling me every single day, you know, ship it off, ship it off. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, as I said to her, you know, I'll, I'll keep it until the race... Yeah. The race is not open, so yeah, I think it's grow. It's gonna go, grow longer if, yeah. if the racing stay <laughs> haven't come back, you know. Yeah, I think so. I tell you what, you might get a run for your money from Louis Bozelan. I don't know if you follow him on on Instagram, but he he grew a pretty impressive one as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, I saw him on uh, on his Instagram. You know, he's got the grown a little bit like uh, mustache. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got that. Um, like um. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. No, he's uh, he, he's a bit of a character, Louis. That's for sure. I'm not quite sure if it's suiting. I think it suits you better. Um, well, glad that you're doing you're doing well, Harry. And obviously, you know, you seem in, in pretty good spirits. Obviously, with with no racing, let's chat about uh, the racing, as it were. And the first point I wanted to to mention um, was when I was looking at your stats earlier on today. I'm not sure. I presume you're aware of this, but every year since 2013, since Trudeau, you've ridden a feature race winner, Harry, every year. I mean, that's pretty good going. Yeah, that's that's pretty much my aim. I, I mean, it doesn't matter how, how many races, um, how many wins that I wrote for the year. But I, my my main focus, you know, like to to write at least one group one. Uh, I mean, one group winner every every year. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lucky that I'll be able to, to do that. You know, it's, it's year that I've got the future win. So, 
and being this year, you know, tough for everybody. Mm. But um, yeah, I've got my my group win of so far. So yeah, pretty much hit my hit my target already. But yeah, um, yeah of course I want to go more. But yeah. Uh, I'm pretty pretty happy about that, and hopefully things stay going in, in, in the way that I want to, you know. Yeah, absolutely. No, obviously, it's certainly a good uh, a good target to have. Obviously, any feature race is worth winning, and the fact that you, you can at least win one every year is great. Obviously, you are a Group One winning jockey. We'll get to that uh, in due course. But um, it leads me on to the fact that your most recent winner was Cyan Blue Vander. Now he was a, a pickup ride for you, Harry. Obviously, you you know you're in the right place at the right time. You pick up the ride. Uh, I mean. You, you are a bit of a go-to man, aren't you? Um, obviously, that's something that's really paid dividends for you down through the years. Um, is that something that sort of plays on your mind a little bit, that you know that you're, you're riding horses that perhaps next time you won't ride, but I guess in the meantime, you're, you're riding big winners on them. So I guess you just take every opportunity. Is that how you look at it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, every, every single horse that I, I hope on, you know, I just want to do my best. And on the day when I when I received the call to, to ride that horse, I know he's a chance in the race. Mm. So I was pretty patient to ride him, you know, like even before the race. I know I'm riding one of the best horses in the race. So I uh, and I must say, you know, I got the job done. Of course it was a it was a pickup ride, but you know, like like I say, you know, you wanna do your best as, as possible, you know, to get the best result for everyone, you know, like for the owner and trainer and the punters or that. And um, yeah, I'm glad that I I did I did I did my best. So so we got the result, yeah. And um, end up you know the winner. It doesn't matter you'll be on it next time or not. And yeah, I'm just hope that I'll I'll, I'll get back on him uh, soon soon again. Yeah. Yeah, no, it'd be, it'd be great if you do. Obviously, he's a very, very good horse, as you say. Um, just talking off some of your your feature race wins, Harry. We'll, we'll go back to the it's, very beginning. Sorry, uh, it, yeah. It's funny, you know, that, that, that pickup right, it happened in 2016 at the same same race when I won on Titanium of course, pickup yeah. right from Manuel Nunes. So it was my second second uh, State World Cup winner uh, on, on uh, Siam Blue Vendor. So, yeah, yeah it, it, it's amazing, you know, like how, how things happen. You know, sometimes things, when it comes, you know, like it means to be yours, it's yours. So, yeah. so I, was, I was one of one of the lucky lucky jockey on the day so yeah i've got i've got a couple cup winner for for that race now yeah it's a, it's a nice race to win isn't it a group two but um obviously your first one was trudeau back in in 2013 in the ew barker and obviously in between then uh the likes of wild geese a horse i know who who's you were very fond of uh titanium as you say but 2017 harry i remember um for a while, they, they stuck me out on the pony. Whether or not that was a good or a bad thing, I don't know. But I managed to stay on him. But I had the privilege of interviewing you after a QE2 Cup on Gilt Complex. Talk us through that, because that must have been obviously fantastic for you. I know, you know that day meant a lot to you. Uh, and to say, you know, Harry Cassum, Group 1 winning jockey, I bet that sounds quite good. Uh, you mean on uh, QE2 Q- Cup? Oh, sorry, the Raffles Cup. The Raffles Cup. I'm sorry. Oh, the Raffles Cup. Cup yeah. I mean, on get, yeah. Get, uh, get complex. You know? Yeah. The group yeah, one. Sorry. Was, the Raffles was, Cup. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. I mean, it always been my dream, you know, to win a group one winner. You know, I wrote, I wrote a few group two winners before that and always been, you know, group one. It was my target and happened on the day. So I was absolutely lost my world on the day, really. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it just, Hey, it was amazing, you know, to, to get the group one winner. And, you know, that's every, every, every jockey's dream to, to, to run a group one winner. So, yeah, I was absolutely, um, yeah, really over the moon on, on, the day, on the day. And how long, how long did that take to sink in, Harry, obviously? Because, I mean, there obviously are jockeys out there, the likes of, you know, Glenn Boss, who we know from Singapore, Hugh Bowman, Frankie de Torre, Ryan Moore without, you know, without sort of, you know, glamorizing it too much and suggesting that they do it day in, day out. I mean, Group 1 winners come, you know, plentiful to these guys. And I imagine, obviously, they, they love every minute of it, but they move on to the next one. But how long did it take for, for you, for, for that race to sink in? Obviously, a big Group 1, um, you know, big prize money, a good horse, the big stage. Was it something that sort of, you know, took you a while to really sink in and think, hang on a minute, I've, I've just won a Group 1 here? 
oh look <coughs> you know like every time i wrote you know like the, the the best thing is you know to get the opportunity first to write in a group race you know mm. like every 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 rights that you get you know yeah like you're just happy enough to be to be to be in the game you know so to get to get that group one winner it just something you know like you couldn't couldn't even imagine you know like but like i say you know to get the rights first and um you know slowly you 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 start to to realize you know my day will come mm. and soon i wrote that soon i wrote that winner and the group one winner it just um you know it's like every winner is the winner you know but being a group one winner is absolutely something like you you, you know hard to get really you know yeah ultra ultra special yeah. isn't it um what about last year harry now you know you got on a horse called i'm incredible he ended up being horse of the year uh, you won a couple of group three handicaps on him um Talk us through what type of horse he was to ride because, um, I mean, he went from, well, I don't want to say, you know, zero to hero because he wasn't that bad. But, I mean, this was a horse that was racing at Crangy D and then eventually went, went to, to, to group one. But you took two group threes on him. And um, what sort of a horse is he? Yeah, he's an upcoming horse. I must say he's, uh, you know, got good, good potential and... Uh, like like you say, you know, to win from Crunchy D up to Group One level, is you know like not 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 easy for the horse to do it. And uh, yeah, he he's he's the horse that I, I must say, you know, he probably the best horse I rode here in Singapore. You know, he's oh, yes. an easy horse to ride. And um, yeah, <clears throat> I must say that he's pretty good horse. You know, he's gonna do more. You know, like uh, but yeah. I'll, I must say that it's pretty pretty good horse name. Uh, look to to get you know like to to win a group group three and uh, up to group one level. Yeah. It just yeah, not easy not easy things to do for you know for no, the horse. It's it certainly it's certainly not at all. Obviously, that's just a um, you know something that some horses have the ability to do and and some obviously don't. Um, so plenty of big wins. Obviously, you you ticked off the uh, the list for for a feature win this year, which is phenomenal really because we haven't had too many feature races harry and you've already um won one of the the, the really good ones um before we get to what you're looking forward to and we return i want to ask you uh, to cast your memory back to september the 6th 2013 the night was uh, made famous for a brazilian jockey riding eight winners but there was one race he couldn't ride in and he certainly couldn't win it and the man that did win it was yourself how much do you remember about that that was when joe rode the eight and the only race he couldn't ride in was an apprentice race, and and that was uh, and that was your victory. Yeah, yeah, Nick. I mean, that's the day that everyone remember. You know, when Joe wrote uh, eight rides for eight winners. You know, and and I, I must say that I'm pretty pretty lucky guy that I'm I'm part of the bit. You know, like mm-hmm. and it was a nine races, and I was uh, I was an apprentice at the time, so there was the only race that Joe could not ride. Sure. So. And and that's the only race that that one left, um, you know, like and it was an apprentice race, and and I was I was the one that wrote, wrote the winner on, on on that race. So yeah, I must say that I'm a part of that that um, yeah. mem- <laughs> memory, you know. Yeah, for sure. No, it's a a day that Singapore race fans will uh, will never forget. Um, 